Hi everyone. I want you to think back for a moment to your favorite childhood memory. Close your eyes and go back to that moment. Who was there and what were you doing? Chances are you were engaging in some sort of play. So what is play? And how is it so powerful to burn itself into our memory? Play is to engage in activity for enjoyment and recreation purposes, rather than a serious or practical purpose. So this is what, what we do for leisure. It's what we do for fun. Stuart Brown is a leading researcher on play, and he's done an extensive amount of scientific studies on the effects of play in the brain. And what he's found, actually he came to study play by studying the common thread in violence. What he found was very interesting. He found that a human deprivation of play is actually the leading indicator for murder. A close look at the biology and neuroscience of play reveals it to be a fundamental survival aspect of all social mammals with measurable negative consequences when we deprive play. So no play is bad and play is good. But try explaining that message to a kid who lives in a trash dump in Nicaragua or lives in this housing community in Honduras. Chances are they don't have electricity, they don't have proper sanitation. Or tell that message to this little girl who doesn't know where her next meal is gonna come from. This is what life is like for 1.3 billion people in the world living today. This is actually a picture that I took myself. I was in the back of a truck and um, I just kind of snapped the picture underneath my arm so these young ladies wouldn't see me, but um, this is real. This is real life. We're faced with major issues today. Crime, hunger, poverty and disease. And shouldn't we focus on those issues first? Well, that's what I thought too. I thought that those were more important. Until I was on a trip and I was invited into a family's home um, along with an associate of mine who was translating for us. They spoke Spanish and I only speak English, so this is a picture um, going into their home. And we played together. I wanted to connect with them on a deeper level, but with language being a barrier, we had to get creative. So we started playing tic-tac-toes with the only pen and the only piece of paper, or the only notepad that this um, child had. But we were able to connect. We were able to share a moment. We were able to build memories and have fun. I asked the family a question, and I'll never forget what the translator had to stop and tell me. I asked them, what do you guys do for fun? Like, what do, what do you do as a family that bonds you? What do you do for excitement? And he had to stop. He, he wouldn't quite finish translating until he kind of explained to me, like, Michelle, you need to understand. There's little joy in a Honduran child's life. And he said it like it was a truth, like, you know, this is just a common thing. And to me, it was shocking. And it really resonated with me. There's little joy in a Honduran child's life. You see, sports and games, they're considered a luxury in developing countries. It's not something that people put the focus on as a priority. To me, this is unacceptable. It's simply unacceptable. So I've done a lot of research on this subject. If you ask my husband, he'll tell you I did way too much research on it. And what I found 
was that play is a tool. And it's actually the most powerful tool we can use to bring about social change. When you throw a soccer ball into a community, youth gravitate to it. They're captured by that moment. And you can use that moment to teach them about some of the other issues we face. Teach them HIV awareness. Teach them about education and school and health and all of these different things that we need to reach the youth because they're our future. And we can do that. We can captivate them through play. In all of my research, I found a lot of things. Uh, play breaks down racial borders. It's our universal language. It entices youth participation in school. It speaks to youth in a way they can understand. It breaks down stereotypes. It empowers women to lead. And that can actually, that's a pretty powerful tool right there. When the community sees a woman leading a team, um, that makes a big impact in these developing nations. Suddenly the women aren't marginalized to be taking care of the kids. They're actually being active in the community as leaders. It provides a positive outlet for frustrations. Life is hard in the developing world. They need an outlet other than violence, because that's the alternative. It provides a place to be for kids. Sometimes living at home is actually more dangerous for the youth in developing countries than to be on the streets. This allows them a place to escape, you know, set up a weekly board game, weekly game night, something that we take for granted here. In the midst of unimaginable suffering, play makes life worth living. It provides hope and it provides a little amount of joy. So I'm here today speaking to you about playing because we have the power to change the world with it. It is a tool, and it's a tool that we're not focused on right now, it seems. The Abundant Life Foundation went out to Roton, Honduras, and we built a basketball court in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> People had to bring, um, they had to mix the cement by hand. The whole community came together to build that basketball court. And it's a, it's a beacon of hope for that community. And I see the value in investing in sports and games. I went to 15 stores in Honduras to find one packet of Domino's. One small packet of Domino's I had to search extensively to find. These things are important. And we have the power. We have the resources to make life worth living for those living in extreme poverty. It's our basic human right to play. And science tells us that we need it for human development. All kids should have access to play in their schools. It would improve attendance in schools significantly if they know that they could go to school and then go to soccer practice afterwards or go work on a play for their community or even play card games a place to be that allows them to connect with other people. Play has the power to change the world. And so I leave here today in hopes that the message has come across that these are things that in the future we need to focus on. And we need to focus on them now, actually. When we're going into on vacation into another country, Bring some games. And also ask, be an advocate for it. Ask what's being done for this person, not for their body, but what's being done for this person 
for their soul? What's being done to provide happiness and community? My faith teaches me that we're meant to live in community and that it's not just the body that we should be focused on, but it's the soul. And I think that we need to feed that as well. Thank you.